Hey guys, it's Chris Mitchell here with Plaid.Music. Today I'm going to show you how to do a few things. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a, um, an actual texture on this tombstone here that I've created. It's actually called a displacement map uh, in uh, Rhino. And it gives you a nice uh, bumpy texture. And what we're going to do is uh, just show how to create a, uh, a kind of a vintage relic look on this bad boy. Today is October 1st and I am definitely in a Halloween mood. So without further ado, let's begin. Now I've uh, basically created this extrusion and I've bouillon joined these together so it, uh, it's one item. You'll see why I did that in a minute. Um, normally when you go over to Rhino, you're going to be in your inspector panel. That's what you're going to see. And they've hidden the properties panel up here in this top little uh, gear icon. So we've got to go to the properties panel. And when you do, you see nothing. It, it just shows you a few little things. But when you click on an item, that's when you get the displacement maps. Uh, that's when you can actually use the displacement tool. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click the displacement tool and I'm going to go and assign a texture. The texture I'm going to assign for this one is actually a grit bump texture. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because it gives me a nice little uh, little gradient detail, a little, little rough detail, excuse me, gritty detail is what I'm going to say. Let's see what this does. Eh, that's pretty good. That might be a little bit too much for that. Let's change it to a three. Now my white point is how high this bump goes and the black point is how low it goes. And actually that looks pretty daggum good. I didn't want this uh, bottom piece, the pedestal, to be uh, bumpy because I, when I print this on my SLA printer, I want that to actually stick to the platen. So I didn't want that to, uh, to do that. Let's see, if I look at high, uh, that's uh, kind of not the results I want. But if I look at the render of that, excuse me, the uh, Arctic view of that, oh yeah, that's giving me a nice, just a nice relic view. But before we do that, I'm actually going to show you something kind of cool. Let's go ahead and undo that. I'm going to go ahead and do Command Z and undo the last few things I did. And you'll see why I'm doing that in just a second. I've created some tools over here. Um, and these are uh, tools that I'm going to use for a wire cut. So I'm going to go ahead and back those bad boys out, negative 50. And you're going to see that if I do my front view, I'm basically going to wire cut these chunks out. A nice little crack here, a crack over here, and then the top corner taken off of that. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do my wire cut command. I'm going to select the cutting curve. And then I'm going to select this object, cut. And I'm going to pass through my Y direction, which is, of course, that direction. I'm going to ungroup that. And I'm going to delete that section that I cut out, which is a nice little crack in that tombstone. I'm going to run the wire cut command again. And I'm going to use this curve, select that. And Y select, just hit enter to pass all the way through. And now, of course, I'm going to delete that little chunk. As you can see, it's already starting to look really cool. You see where I'm going with this. I'm going for that nice vintage cemetery look, kind of like uh, you would see in Savannah uh, and like a Bonaventure uh, cemetery if you've ever been to Savannah. It's uh, really cool. Uh, so I'm going to select this object to cut, pass through. And, of course, now I'm going to delete that. All right, so I've got a nice cracked vintage looking tombstone over here. Uh, now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and add that displacement map. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click the object. Now I'm back, of course, I was in that inspector panel. Now I'm in the object, uh, excuse me, the properties panel. I'm going to go ahead and click on that displacement. And remember, I had assigned a texture earlier, and I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that grit bump texture. I'm going to change that white point. That white point is how high it is. I'm going to change it to point 0.3. Let's see what that looks like. That looks pretty daggone good. That looks nice and vintage. And let's see what that looks like as an Arctic view. Oh yeah, that looks that looks great. Yeah, that's gonna give me a nice broken look. That's just that's just fantastic. I love the way that looks. Um, all right, now if you've been paying attention to the surroundings here, you can see that I've got uh, some. Oops, excuse me. You can see that I've got some text over here that I want to play with. Well. Um, let me get my tools out of the way here. Let me go ahead and get this out of the way, and we'll talk about what we've got to do to do that. Uh, let's just go ahead and move them 50. All right, so I've got those out of the way. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and rotate this at negative 90. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that is because uh, my version of Rhino, which is Rhino 6, tends to work a little bit better uh, with text on the uh, top view. Now you see that uh, here lies the body of Barry M. Deep. He was killed while in his sleep. I've definitely got a nice uh, Disney Haunted Mansion vibe going on with that. Um, it's really a, a fun thing. 
All right, I'm going to show you some cool things with that. I'm going to go ahead and bring this up above it. Of course, I can put it right on the uh, top if I want to. If I'm looking at the right, uh, I'm literally right there on the top. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's uh, Normally when I work with text, as you can see, I can edit it over here because I'm using a text tool um, instead of a text object. So since I'm using text, I've got to explode that text. So I'm going to go ahead and enter the explode command. You can, of course, uh, if I didn't want to enter the explode command, I could just click that to explode. But I'm right there. So I'm going to explode that text. And now it's not, no longer editable, but I can extrude it. So I'm going to go into the right. I'm going to get extrude that curve. And we're going to do both sides. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically wait till I get to about to the middle of that. And that's about right there. That looks pretty good. Um, now, before I do anything else, I want to actually group that text together. And you'll see why I'm doing that in just a minute. We're going to go ahead and select all of that, hit the command, and release the rest of it. Now, while I've got the text selected, I'm going to group that. And then what we're going to do, uh, this is pretty crucial. If I tried to run a Boolean command with this text on that background, it wouldn't work. Here's what would happen. If I ran a Boolean difference, and I selected what I'm subtracting from, and then I hit enter and then select what I'm attracting with. It basically, it will, it will work some of the way, but it won't give you the full effect. It basically does this kind of thing. It puts a lot of streaks and it's just not a good, uh, good result. I wanted it to look like it was carved out, right? So what we've got to do is instead of using this NURB surface that we've got to do with this uh, displacement map, we've got to actually got to change that to, uh, we've got to extract that as a mesh. So I'm going to put extract, and we're going to do extract, uh, let's see, where is this bad boy out? Uh, mesh surface, I believe. Ah, nope. Extract mesh. Uh, extract render mesh. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. I'm going to extract the render mesh out of this. All right. And as you can see now, that's a lot of polygons. So this is actually giving me a lot of geometry that I can use. Now, if I... If I move this down, let's move this down negative five. You see that while my render mesh is down here, my uh, my actual NURBS file is still here. So I'm going to go ahead and move that over. Let's just move that over 50. All right, get it out of the way. And I can't buoy on this from that either. I still need to actually extract the render mesh from that. So extract render mesh. Uh, let's see. Where am I up there? Extract render mesh. There we go. Render mesh. Type that in. And now I've turned that text into render mesh, but it is grouped. So this is why I want to get rid of that. And this is why I grouped it earlier. Now that is purely my render mesh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that again. And I'm going to command that tombstone and deselect that. I'm going to group my render mesh text. I'm going to go ahead and move this up five again. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete that from, I'm going to create a Boolean command, a, a mesh Boolean actually. Uh, and that's actually a different uh, command altogether, a mesh Boolean difference. Now here's the trick. It just says first set. It doesn't tell you what you want to Boolean from. So I'm going to again select this one. And then my second, uh, oops, sorry. Let's do that again. Boolean mesh, mesh Boolean. I'm going to hit that, hit enter, and now my second set is that group. I'm going to enter. It takes a little while to render this. Basically, it's got a lot of geometry to work with on this, and uh, it takes just a bit of time, but it's almost there. There we go. Now, if I hit render on this, you'll actually see that it's actually nice and square text. And look at those nice jagged edge, edges this is giving me. It just really looks like a vintage tombstone. So let, let me view this in the uh, upright view a little bit. Let's see. Let's actually get, let me set this up right. Uh, let's do that. And let's do 90. Oops. Uh, I'll try that again. I think I clicked the wrong thing. Oh, I did. I clicked, clicked the base of that. Let's get back to, hold on a second to the shaded view. Sorry about that. There we go. Now it's both of them. We'll do 90 on that. There we go. Now, if I look at this as a Arctic view, for example, it's just a really cool uh, view. Oh, yeah, look at that. That is just great. Uh, it gives you that nice removed text. 
and it gives you that really cool vintage vibe. Uh, and that's how to create a, um, a displacement map. And of course, I did some wire cutting on that, and that's how you remove a bouillon mesh from a displacement map. You've got to get rid of your actual NURBS and move them over to the side and keep that. I can, of course, S export all of this as an STL and use it as my print file. And if I wanted to, I could pull it in an STL if I wanted to machine that with a CNC as well. And of course, I hope you guys learned a lot from this tutorial and best of luck.